folks and welcome to the stream my name is mike d'angelo aka that tells guy and i am once again joined by my lovely co-host rihanna hello and our lovely ish co-host luna she's a lovely ish <laughs> she's gonna start temper tantruming any moment i'm sure um if you want to see one of her temper tantrums you can now see it in uh in the latest christmas story that just released earlier today uh so if you go to the tell us website you can read christmas misfits the, uh, the short story is right there on the front page. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the, the second volume of our uh, Tell Us Races feature. So we, back in episode 8, talked about the quote-unquote goodly races of Tell Us, and that's your humans, elves, dwarves, uh, gnomes, orcs, minotaurs, uh, kaja, and kobolds. I think that's most of the base ones. Um, but today we're going to be talking about uh, you know, who's perceived by those quote-unquote goodly races as the evil ones. Um, Telus is very much a melting pot. It's very much a you know shades of gray, not black and white kind of situation. So I think more often than not, we've seen the, uh, the quote-unquote bad races portrayed in a good light. Right. Um, There's you know. a lot of overlap between them. There's a lot of misconceptions in the storylines yep and we will be seeing a little bit of that as we move into uh into you know this segment and everything like that so we're just going to be looking at pictures and then talking a little bit about um you know where these races have shown up in the telus universe and things along that line so we're going to start with uh our goblins they were the first evil race that we had uh concept art done uh for for us by um paul davies he uh he ended up doing this piece of art, and I think when when it comes to the art that we have, this one's probably the third or fourth most stolen, <laughs> most stolen one. Um, this uh, this one ha ended up on like a Russian version of the Canterbury Tales or something like that, which was kind of strange because it doesn't evoke the Canterbury Tales no, whatsoever. Um, but anyway, uh, so this is a, a goblin in the Telus universe. You can see that it's not quite like the way that they show up in D and D or anything like that. Um, more or, or, yeah. Well, more, uh, they're all humanoid, you know, typically speaking, but, um, but these ones are definitely more human sized. Um, when we decided that the orcs were going to be a goodly race, uh, we knew that we needed something with a little bit of presence. So what we did was we kind of manipulated the general concept of a goblin into kind of like what would happen if like a an elf was savage so there's a lot of features that you see in a goblin that kind of evoke an elf maybe from like a different dimension or something like that the uh, the ears are very similar but instead of being drawn back they're kind of drawn to the side um and we did kind of get to a point where we knew hey we were losing like a cute diminutive diminutive race so we brought them in as gremlins so you know we still have that kind of thing represented, but uh, yeah, goblins are very much the the go to when it comes to you know what we're lacking in having moved the orcs to the goodly races, so to speak. So we've had a couple of goblins um, show up in the in the various book series. Um, the first real expectation that we had of them was that they were bad guys because the Nathrin story awake, the goblins are you know the the quintessential bad guys in her story um she dreams of them being like these uh you know this race that can't feel pain that you know they're very hard to put down that kind of thing um even though it, at from her perspective at that time she had never actually seen a goblin um she had seen them you know in, in drawings and books and stuff like that but she had never actually gotten to go and fight any of the goblins that her you know her kin died fighting so um she didn't really get those opportunities we also have a goblin that showed up in quantum quest the uh well the game and the novelization um and you know i feel like you can't really do quantum quest in a way where what are you oh you're laughing at Zelda <laughs> skittering up the stairs um you can't do quantum quest without everybody having a you know a little bit of good in them so uh, Daris Urza is our goblin from the Quantum Quest universe. 
um, who shows up and he's one of the cover characters. So it was a fun little way for us to, to bring that together. I'm just here for the Pell Assassins. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, so the next one that we're going to be talking about is our Knowles. This one has a very fun story. Yeah. I'll let you tell it because you actually know this story. Right. So uh, we have a, or we had a D&D group that would meet, um, you know, once a week or once a month. Once a week. Once it a was week. weekly. We, we try, yeah, it was weekly and then the pandemic happened. So we moved everything online. Um, and in the attempt to do so, our DM was creating an encounter that featured this specific artwork and he had no idea that it was, that it was a Telus property mm-hmm. that Michael actually had a commission. Yeah. It just it just happened to show up on our, our roll was it roll twenty? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it happened to show up on roll twenty as the bad guy. And Michael's like, did, did you do that on purpose? He's like, do what? <laughs> yeah, you and I were laughing our butts off oh, yeah, because he showed up. No and and this null artwork was probably like I want to say, like, within, like, the first, like, 10 or 20 pieces of art that we had right. ever commissioned. Yeah, it was really um, early on. Yeah, so it was very funny. Uh, he had a bunch of other gnolls that showed up in the campaign, and then he needed, like, a chieftain, and this guy showed yeah. up, and it was like, are you kidding me? It was the funniest thing. Uh-huh. Um, I'm, I'm still, like... In shock. <laughs> right. It's just the funniest thing. Um, so we've had a couple of gnolls show up in the series as well. Um most of the time they show up as kind of like fodder enemies because that's what they're known as in like the D and D you know stuff. Um, one of my favorite gnolls is from the quantum quest, um, uh, novelization and that's, um, Gareth Quarrel, who is kind of like a crypt robber. So he's got like just this cool, like presence about him. I, I definitely think that of all the cover characters from the, the quantum quest game that are going to make a, uh, a, kind of jump to the regular book universe i think he's probably going to be one of the ones that i can't say no to mm. he's just such a fun character and i think because of things like tower sphere we can kind of finagle that kind of stuff because it is kind of like a world hopping sport right that kind of thing um we've had a couple of gnolls in the D D campaign not not the one that <laughs> yeah. not the one that uh, rich ran but the one that um that we run that takes place in versali barai um, but I think for the most part, the only place that we've really seen them in, uh, in any of the main stories so far were in, um, Heart of the Forest, where they kind of show up as, like, the enemy of the week kind of feeling. And then, uh, briefly, I think we see them in, uh, one of Aaron Panton's stories, um, uh, a most unusual champion or something like that. The- Are gnolls and kobolds, uh related distantly in any way there's like there's totally there's rumors that they are and i think we've officially said that um of the two races they can breed that okay. like they they are like one of the anthro races that can interbreed because we have some half kobolds right um or at least there's rumors of them so uh real quick because we have it here we also have one other uh null character who shows up in uh, one of our short stories another aaron canton story this is um, Blood in the Sand, it was about um, vampire gnolls because there's uh, some African legends about hyenas that were vampiric and stuff like that. I was going to say, it's very hyena-esque. Yep, yep, yep. So we, we kind of uh, took two of our Quantum Quest characters, decided to throw them into the same story to try and like further that legend within the world of Talos. So it was fun. And Aaron did a really good job with it. And Wern did a really cool job with, like, the colored patterns of the story and everything. Mm -hmm. So so our next one that we're going to talk about is our trolls. The trolls of Telst are by far, like, the most varied race. Um, And to the point where they might all call themselves trolls, but they might not all actually be from the same, you know, original kind of group or tribe or sect or anything like that does the army have any other shen in the belly of it no <laughs> <laughs> not that kind no. of troll <laughs> we um we had a couple of different versions of this guy made um and and one of the things especially with like our kind of scaly looking characters um when paul davies was putting them together um we didn't really know where we were going to go with things and trolls are kind of tough again because they're so varied in the way that they're presented um but we wanted to, the way that the trolls kind of describe themselves is that they're descendants of dragons. 
Um, so we wanted to have if you if you take like a good look at the the trolls, you see monkey shark. Monkey shark, sure. Um, you can see like they've got kind of like a scaly look to them. Now not all the trolls do because again, there's a very good chance that they're not all quote unquote trolls. They might all consider themselves trolls, but they weren't all part of the same original race. Um, so they were probably sub races and things like that. Um, but they're not angering the same people on the internet. No, <laughs> no, they're not all from Sweden. Um, but uh, we did have you know versions of the the trolls that maybe looked a little bit more like um, just big burly green skins and stuff like that. But we wanted to set them aside from orcs the same way that we did with uh, you know with the goblins and stuff like that. You are going to knock stuff over, and I'm going to be so mad at you, you troll. Um, Talking to the dog, not the wife, just for clarification. <laughs> you troll. <laughs> um, so uh, this was, again, one of probably the first like 20 to 30 pieces of art that we had done uh, by Paul Davies. Um, one of my favorites. We are, I think, in the next... So we have Quantum Quest reinforcements coming out, um, and then the release that we have after that that we're already starting to work on i think this guy is going to inspire one of the characters from that set um it's been in my notes forever and we're talking to uh to sergey about trying to to give him a little bit of work and uh and we'll see you know a, a kind of representation of this guy there excuse me one second um so as far as notable trolls we had um our our, our biggest kind of troll presence in heart of the forest again heart of the forest was kind of like our exploration of like every race in Telus, um because it was originally developed as a game and uh, and when you're making a game you try and make things as varied as you can and uh the trolls were part of a uh, a spot close to the end of the story and we were trying to play with you know subverting expectations and stuff like that so when you meet the trolls they look like this guy but uh, but they're not quite as dumb as this guy looks. So they got to uh, to play with the idea that they were much smarter than they were. And uh, Heart of the Forest too. I think we lean into, you know, the troll presence even more. Um, and again, to a point where hey, they're not really as bad as they seem. You know, the the goodly races might try and paint them like that. But the more and more that you get to know, you know, the people around you, the more and more you realize that everybody has nobody's a monolith everybody's got their own story behind them and everything like that so we are going to take a tiny tiny break to uh to move over to our sponsor so let's uh take two seconds and pop over there folks we have seen frequent collaboration with lit rpg author aaron renfro and that's for good reason he's one of the hardest working storytellers in the business and he writes incredible tales that you won't soon forget and that leave you hungry for more well, his latest is here, and it's a high-octane, thrilling ride. Spite the Dark, the first book in the Assassin Summoner series, is gritty and exciting, and it harkens back to 80s and 90s action films in the best of ways. Fans will love spending time with Renfro's characters, exploring the world and the rule sets that he's built, and watching the action unfold. And they won't have to wait too long for more, as a sequel is planned for release this spring. Check out the promo for Spite the Dark on the TELUS website. Best part of that <laughs> was in the middle of trying to run our sponsor spots. We've got both dogs going, <laughs> and then Luna going. Rawr, rawr. I'm a troll. Um, our next one that we'll show off is our Lagana. So cool looking. Now, so we actually have not yet seen the uh, the tribal kind of feeling Lagana. We we've seen. I mean, that they they come in tribes, and we do see um, a tribe of Lagana show up in Heart of the Forest. Um, and we've seen Aaron Canton tackle Logano a couple of times. Um, but I think the, the kind of way that we see this one in particular, um, we're, we're very likely going to explore that in the Silver Serpent Chronicles because there is an entire island that uh, is kind of populated by Logano. At one point, uh, the Ippias Archipelago was a lot more diverse and... The humans of the archipelago kind of drove you know whatever races away from the main island so there's a third there, there's three islands and one of them is called norkov and the logano there are uh, are kind of tribal like this um and they worship 
a volcano god and stuff like that. So that's going to be fun. We do know that the, the Logano, as far as kind of a religious group go, are probably the most devout out of like everybody in the Tullus universe. Um, you know, everybody's a little culty sometimes, but <laughs> uh, the, the Logano, they have temples all over the place. Um, they can find lots of different things to find, you know, divine strength from and things like that. I like how the, the outfit is very, like, island tribal shaman-esque. Yep. Um, and I also love that, like, it's colorful. Like, a lot of bad races are very drab overall, but a lot of the ones in Tellus are. Yep. And we wanted to play with colors a little Vibrant. bit differently than you would usually see them. Yeah. So, like, a lot of times, like, if you're seeing lizard folk in D&D &D and, you know, Pathfinder and stuff like that, you usually see them presented with, like, a greener color. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at one point we had the Lagana presented with that color, but we wanted to, you know, the same way that people have lots of different shades mm -hmm. that they can appear as, we wanted to make sure that the, the various races of Telus could all look a different way. Um, so Especially since the landscape is so varied, you need a little right. camouflage diversity in yep. there. Yep, you figure if you are part of a, uh, you know, a, a, a less temperate, more cold area, um, if there's snow and stuff like that, a nice blue color might look uh, pretty nice there. If you're part of, like, rocky terrain or something like that, that might make sense. Um, if you're a sea-based Lugano or something, that makes sense as well. Cold so. water, you'll have blubber. Blubber? <laughs> blubber scales? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You ever see the fat mermaids? <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> they have so many fat like mermaids in uh in like what their actual climate would look like. So oh, like, like the manatees. Were, yeah, so like if they were like deep sea, they would have like the the lights coming off of them, and if they were in like the the freezing cold waters, they'd be a little perky. A little for warmth. I need to be warm. <laughs> As all creatures there are. So we have a second Logano piece of artwork that we can look at. Um, this one kind of, I think, gives more of the idea of, like, the devout, you know, priestess kind of look and everything like that. Um, so you do typically see um, the the lizard folk of Telus, the Logano, in that kind of concept where, you know, they're going to, like, one of those, like, kind of South American stepped pyramid kind of looking things, um, you know, go and pray to their gods and have lots of gold and everything like that or i like that they like their bling regardless of what the bling is right you got the you got the gold you got the feathers yep the heels are on point <laughs> 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 uh, and i think this uh the the male logano here on the left um i think technically both of these logano inspired characters in the quantum quest universe but uh this one over here on the left was also in our war for telus short story um which might have been renamed now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but it's the ones that, it's the story that featured Benton and Kapavi and Pamir and everything like that. So um, he only makes a very brief appearance there, but I think he also makes a, uh, an appearance in the Quantum Quest novelization. So that was, it was fun to bring these characters who were originally just parts of concept pieces and move them over into a, uh, a story of their yeah, own that is that is one thing we rarely have gotten art and not been like what's their backstory where are they from mm -hmm. where's their name <laughs> right we are we are and, and i think typically when that does happen it's all right we got it as a concept you know and and sometimes like even the artists will jump in and say like hey i have an idea for this character because mm -hmm. like kayonani came out of nowhere right you know it was paul did the work for for her and then was like all right and i don't think he knew what she was but he was like here i picked her name and it was from there we just ran with it um and we figured out the entire process of what dragon speaker was going to be so all right we're going to move on to the next one which is our little our little guys that we were talking about earlier so the uh, the gremlins of telus they are the uh, the second real diminutive race that we have so we have the gnomes for the good guys and we have the gremlins for the bad guys um very world of warcraft where you have the gnomes and the goblins um, but in this case, we have the gremlins. Um, and they get wet after they feed after <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're not Mogwai. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can feed them after midnight, okay, and cool. then and they can get wet. Uh, okay. So you don't have to worry about them. They're already murderous and mischievous, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. We do have 
um, our, our most famous um, uh, gremlin characters also come from Heart of the Forest, and at least one of those four characters that we meet was in Quantum Quest, and I think I leaned real far into like the goofy Easter egg of it all thing because each one of those four gremlins had like goggles with like colored straps and what colors were they the same colors as the bandanas that the ninja turtles wear <laughs> okay. so um so we had uh for a second i thought you were going the minions route no 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 not minions <laughs> um ninja turtles get it right ninja turtles ninja turtles is the kind of thing that i could like a hundred times be like yep here's a nod to the ninja turtles <laughs> I gotta teach Rihanna to talk when I'm drinking. Huh? <laughs> Is that a thing I'm supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to fill dead air. All right. Well, that was some fine drinking <laughs> of that water bottle. It's been done. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, our gremlins. We uh, we we see them kind of infrequently, just because a lot of the times we're we're telling stories through the lens of the good guys. Um, but again. Uh, they start off as kind of baddies in the Heart of the Forest series, and then within a chapter or two, uh, Kelvin makes buddies with at least one of them and ends up being a cute little addition to the story. Just because they're bad guys doesn't mean they're bad guys. All right, Zangief. <laughs> uh, we are getting down to our, our last two of like the main ones, and technically I think even the, the next one is kind of uh, a late addition, but we're going to include them anyway. Um, so the Rhinotaurs, they are the big dummies. We needed a big dumb brute, um, and the trolls just don't really, they don't really do it. So we needed a big, bigger, dumber brute. So we already showed you the uh, the one character we had, Nothbox, in um, Blood in the Sand, but uh, we had uh, Luigi IX or Luigi Nine. I don't know how he pronounces his name. Um, he did this concept for us for uh, a couple of the Rhinotaurs. Typically speaking, like when we're looking at the like the Quantum Quest versions of the characters. You can't really tell the difference between the male and the female uh, as much as you can in here. This one, yeah. yeah, this is probably a little atypical. They are they're both kind of hulking brutes, mm -hmm. um, in, in most other kind of features that we have of them. And we had a uh, another artist, lazy artist, who worked through like a car accident. Their name was lazy artist. Right. Okay. Right. And I was going Clarify. to say, <laughs> ironically, worked their butt off so much that like okay. even through a car accident did. You know, did awesome work yeah. for us for the Rhino Tours. I think, give me one second. I can't remember. I think we just had a mouse pad launch with our newest Rhino Tour artwork. Oh, Etsy, don't be slow. So, this is our, our latest Rhino Tour artwork. Looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Does something for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was our our rhinotaurs. Uh, we again, we have Nothbox, who is kind of like our only real, you know, showed up in a story kind of character the, thus far. And then we're gonna leave things off with the Naga. Um, they buxom, buxom, <laughs> very long tails, probably a little different than you would normally see them. But at the same time. The, uh, the only Naga that we've really played with in the Telus universe thus far are the ones that showed up in Lord of Thunder. Right. Um, and they're much more land-based. Uh, they're like a winter-themed kind of Naga. Um, so they wouldn't have the same look at all. It was... I like the long serpentine look, though. It sets it apart. Mm -hmm. and, and I would assume, um, similar to like when we were talking about the Lugano, the, the place that they come from really drives... A lot of the ways that they could look um so we definitely have these ones which would be more of like a sea based i don't even think like if you had like river naga they would look like this um so in this case this is this is what they would look like here and we've only had like i said the the one set of nagas show up but um in that third the second expansion the third release of quantum quest we are going to start to to move things forward a little bit and start to expand um, so we have the Avarians as like the good race that we're adding to that set, and then the Naga, who are going to be the quote unquote bad race that we're going to add to that set. So that's uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be able to see a little bit more diversity there. So. Um, 
were bears. Where do they? They're more on the goodly side. They're more on the goodly side, mm-hmm. but perceived by some as. I mean, if you're a werewolf or aware of anything, yeah. you know the 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 fear is that you know you're being clandestine, you're being mischievous, stuff like that. We also have you know were rats. We've seen them in the D and D campaign, mm-hmm. but we don't have any like any art for that or anything. Um, and again, played with the Ninja Turtle trope there. <laughs> Just had four rats who were worshiping a uh, a giant turtle instead. Uh-huh. So we got the land rats. <laughs> um, but that that is it for uh, for today for the um, the races of Tullus. We do have you know the the sub races that show up here and there. We have that awesome Levian artwork that uh, Cristiano, the one the person who did our so cool. children's book, did. So they are also part of the goodly races. But we have kind of like our more popular set, and then we're going to start to expand out a little bit and look more at those things. But any, any chatter that you want to, to talk about before we cut over to our show closing page? I am unprepared. I am unprepared. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go over to our, our closing the show. Uh, so folks on this grumble, <laughs> what are you grumbling for? Again, the dog, not the wife. <laughs> the wife, the wife is grumbling. Uh, so on the screen right now, you should see all the places that you can see, uh, tell us to content out on the internet. Uh, the place that we just were, where you can find all of our stuff, is tellus.com, the website. Uh, if you want to see our premium digital stuff, you can find that at patreon.com. We release art pieces on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays there if you want to get them way ahead of uh, when they drop on the website, which is once a week. And uh, you can also find our, um, our battle maps and things like that on there. We usually release those on Tuesdays and Thursdays as we have those available. Tantrum is starting. Uh, if you want to see these videos after they've uh, they've been purged from the, the Twitch channel, you can find us on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at world of tells. But if you want to see us live, twitch.tv slash that tell us guy is the way to go. Let, let me interject here. Now would be a good time to mention the, uh, the TikTok channels we have, first being the Tales of Tellus, that's T-A-I-L-S, which features many tantrums from our little grumbly dog who's on the floor trying to get attention right now. Mm-hmm. It's also Tales of Tellus on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Weird Witch Wands, where I make magic wands. May or may not be magic this time. One of a kind. One of a kind. Handcrafted. <laughs> and handcrafted. You have, you ain't wearing pants. I'm wearing I'm wearing shorts. You're not wearing pants. No, they're not you pants, pull on but they're shorts. Pig in it. <laughs> uh-uh, I got shorts on. None of that is true. Um, but weird well, which ones is shorts spelled. On. That's true. <laughs> weird which ones is spelled W Y R D. Just for uh, for people who can't quite see the uh, the screen right now. And then the other, the last place that we'll bring your attention to is uh, our Etsy shop, where you can find our premium physical goods. Those are jumbo mouse pads. The uh, the battle maps on awesome polyester neoprene uh hello there uh you can also find bookmarks stickers the uh the books signed and um our art book our tabletop game just do we have a children's book on there yet i don't think that we do because we we need to figure out what we're going to do as far as the artwork that we're going to be putting up there but that'll be up there that'll be available to purchase signed copies of we have a children's book on amazon we should also throw that up there (laughs) I mean, we can talk about it every How single be, time we're yeah. doing a show if you How want. to be a wizard. Here, look. It's on Amazon. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here's some sample pages. It's really cute. It it's really is for, cute. It's for children and adults and, and cats. If you <laughs> if you want to ind- indoctrinate your child into loving fantasy, this is the way to go about it. Uh-huh. So, But uh, that is going to wrap us up for the day. Unless you want a chalky milk. You want some chalky milk? I think I do want a chalky well, milk. Well, the boys won't have his chalky milk is what he's <laughs> You can I'm tell sorry, it's you're been delirious. A long day. I'm so tired. <laughs> that is going to be it. Um, I so, did my best. I did my best. All right. So until next time, uh, thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow for uh, map making. And in the meantime, I miss you. Me too. I miss you as well. <laughs>